Good morning. Today is fantastic Friday, and I am so glad that I get to do the morning message with you, with you today. So go ahead and put your finger on G, and we'll go ahead and start reading. Good morning. Today is fantastic Friday. So we know that today is Friday, and we know it's going to be a fantastic Friday because our morning message told us so. Um. Today, let's talk about uppercase letters. So we know that, go ahead and just go circle or color in all the uppercase letters. Let's do that. You could have circled them. I just colored them, whichever one's easiest for you. And let's talk about some things that are uppercase. Right now, I want you to name off all the things that are uppercase. You can tell the grown-up that you're with right now, or if you're by yourself, just tell your, just talk out loud. What are some things that we make uppercase? So if you said when we start a sentence, you are correct. If you said a day of the week, you are also correct. So like if Friday, um, if you said a month of the year, so it's April, you are correct. If you said we say we make uppercase names, you are correct. If you said that when I is by itself, it is uppercase, you are also correct. If you said places that you can go are uppercase, you're also correct. So if you ever go to like Pizza Hut, it would be uppercase too. So lots of things get to be uppercase letters. Now, if I'm writing a sentence, I'm going to always start it with an uppercase letter. But if I was to write the word and, should I make it uppercase? Probably not. The answer is no. So let's go ahead and move down here, and we're going to talk about the R family, R as in car, and we know the AR sound is kind of like that pirate sound. We talked about it just a little bit before we got um, out of school, and we know the R says R. Everyone say the R sound, R. So we're going to make some AR words today. This is a jar. This person's looking far, and this is a bar. So if I was to look at jar, jar, I would have to use that R sound and put that AR in there. Now, if I was to look for far, I would f R. Oh, I'm done. Oh, wait, I can't be done. I can't just put an F and an R because I have a third box. So what could I put? An AR, because we know that R sound. And then this is a bar. So what two letters would I need to put there? You're right, he said an A and an R. That's a great job working on those R words. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move down here. And it says join the words to make a compound word. So if you put these two words together, so it'd be word, word, together. So word, word, together. And then what word do you have? So we have dog and then we have house. So if I go dog house, now I have dog house. So I'm going to write the word dog house in my box. Did I put a space between dog house? No, I didn't put a space because I know that it's now one word. When we compound those words together, word, 
word together, then it makes one word. So doghouse. So, um, what's another compound word where we can put words and then another word together to make a new word? So you could do sailboat, put it together, and then you have sailboat. You could do butterfly, put it together, and then you have butterfly. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move down here to the math part. So we know that we're going to use these 10 frames to do subtraction. And we're so, so smart because we know that the, what it, we know what the first number of subtraction is. We know that the first number of subtraction is what? Subtraction is a big number taking some away to make the same number or a smaller number. So we know it's the whole number. If it's the whole number, I'm going to look at all um, that's in the 10 frame. I'm going to look at all of them. And I can look at this 10 frame and I see that there's 10. Because the 10 frame is all the way full, and when a 10 frame is all the way full, I know there's 10. Now I can look at my 10 frame and I see that there, so I know subtraction is a whole number, a big whole number, taking some away. I'm going to guess where they're putting the X's, they're taking some away. So I'm going to say how many they're taking away. One, two, three. They took three away. So 10, there was 10, then they took three away. Then I have to figure out how many is left. And to figure out how many is left, I'm going to count or look with my 10 frame how many is here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm not going to count the ones with X's because I know those are already taken away. So I had 10. I took three away, and now I have seven. We'll do this one together, and then I'll have you do the last one on your own. So let's look here. I know with a subtraction problem, the first number is the total number. And so I can look at this, and I know that there is one, two, three. There's three. I know it's that sign right there is telling me to take away. So then I'm going to see how many I'm taking away. And I'm taking away one. So there's one with an X on it. Three take away one equals. And we know the equals is how many we have left. And if I don't count the one with the X, I can count one, two. There's two left. So three minus one equals two. Go ahead and do the last one on your own. And then I'll do it and we can compare. Okay, so what you would want to do is you would want to remember that first number is how many we're starting with. And I see that I'm a good mathematician, so I don't need to count because I know there's five and one more, so I know that's six. I'm going to see how many I'm taking away because I see there's a subtraction sign or a minus sign, so it's how many I'm taking away. So I'm going to see how many have X's. One, two, three, four, five. And then I know that this symbol here tells me how many I have left, and I have one. So I know 6 minus 5 equals 1. You guys did a great job this morning with that morning message. I am proud of you, and I hope that you all have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.